I'm your host, Sarah Sorniak. I'm helping prepare you for your next journey and empower you to take it on. Whether you're searching for a job or facing a roadblock which led you to a detour in life, we're sharing stories that will help you put your best foot forward. Hi there. This week, we're talking about how to be your authentic self. I'm talking with Julia Jorinze Silverberg. Julia is a social media enthusiast with self-described border collie energy. She loves to excite, inspire, and motivate people to cut through the digital clutter by being authentic and vulnerable online. She has a diverse background, having worked for the Buffalo News, the Buffalo Niagara Partnership, and Telesco Creative Group before joining Now Marketing Group as brand manager in 2020. As the 2018 recipient of the Emerging Alumni Award, granted by the University at Buffalo School of Management Alumni Association, Julia has more than 12 years of experience working in digital marketing and is known for delivering powerful presentations that leave people feeling excited and empowered. And I think those are words that this episode will bring those um, that are listening and watching. Uh, you will feel excited and empowered and inspired. Uh, Julia's got a lot of great insight about how to show your authentic self um, in her very famous anti-highlight reel fashion. We talk a bit about that. We also talk about ideas that those in the job hunt can utilize that can maybe set them apart from others while in the job hunt. I hope you enjoy it. I would like to welcome Julia Jornze Silverberg to the show. And um, this week we're talking about how to be your authentic self, whether that's in life in general, or especially when you're, you know, you're on the job hunt and, and all that. So welcome, Julie. I appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. I'm so happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. So I am Julia Jornsay Silverberg. I am, a, I've got self-described border collie energy. So I have big energy and I am very, very into social media marketing. I have been doing social media marketing and digital marketing for my entire career um, for 10 plus years. And I have really over the last few years started to shift away from wanting to be known as just like the social media expert. I feel like that's what a lot of people, especially in Buffalo, know me as and for. And while I love that, what I have really seen is a need in the market, in the world, is someone who understands the benefit and the best practices and the strategies that are important to use for social media, but can also empower and excite people on using these tools to connect. Because you can Google all day the best practices and you can learn the specific tools and tactics as it relates to social media. So where I really light up and love helping people is in the area of helping them figure out how can they use social media sustainably in a way that feels good because everyone has a different comfort level with what they want to share, how much they want to share, what makes sense for their business. And so I really specialize in helping people figure out how can they use social media to get the word out about what they do, what they love, and really create connections with people online. So by day, I work as a brand manager at a marketing agency called Now Marketing Group. And in my spare time, my weekends, my evenings, I am kind of living and breathing social media in all other capacities. So I do a bunch of content creation on my own, I like for my platforms. And I also have clients on the side that I kind of help with their social media too. So that's a little bit about me and what I do. I'm also a dog mom. Um, I'm obsessed with my dog named Gouda. And yeah. <laughs> he's really cute I I've I've followed you on social so he, he, just like a big teddy bear is yeah. a doodle mix yeah he's an Australian labradoodle but you wouldn't be able to that that's you know his technical breed but he looks like a golden doodle and he's he's a tan color and straight up looks he looks like a stuffed animal yes he does <laughs> so authenticity is something um that you really you practice it and you know we see it in your social media um with with how you speak on social um and even your speaking engagements as well uh, what is your process to find yourself and to make sure 
um, you know, that this was an important part of your, your life that you wanted to kind of put out there and, and really in, in many ways, inspire people to want to, to do as well for themselves? Well, I love that question. Um, I, th first I have to say like, it, what was my process to kind of find myself? Um, what kind of got me interested in authenticity to start? Honestly, therapy. I went to my first therapy therapist at the age of nine, which I know is quite rare. I happen to be someone with generalized anxiety. And from an early age, like when I was a kid, my parents noticed that. And I am very, very grateful to be born to two parents who don't have a stigma surrounding therapy. So when my parents noticed signs of having an anxious child, they took me to a child psychologist and I was able to start learning at the age of nine breathing techniques to calm myself. I learned self-soothing techniques at a really early age and I learned how to like check in with myself and monitor how am I feeling? How am I doing? How does this particular environment make me feel? How does this way of communication make me feel? Just so many things, right? So from the age of nine, I started building like a deep self-awareness practice that has just kind of carried through my entire life and completely shaped who I am. So that has been a huge part of my journey. And when you when we kind of then relate it to authenticity, um, in 2017, I had a major kind of life transition moment happen. I had been, um, <clears throat> I had been seeing someone for six and a half years. We were engaged, and at the end of 2017, I ended up calling off my wedding and ending that relationship. And at that time, because I was very like involved in social media, I had put out a lot of content and everything like that. It, social media still is a big part of my life. And so at that time, people knew who my fiance was. They saw him all the time on my social. And so I realized I was at a crossroads and I could either pretend like nothing was wrong and kind of like keep all of that stuff behind a closed door or I could be authentic and vulnerable and share with my audience that I was going through a major life transition. I did not share with my audience any of the nitty gritty details behind the breakup because that was not relevant at all to them. What I realized was I had an opportunity to just be honest and real and say to them, hey, I know you're used to seeing me show up with big, bright, happy energy. That's what I'm used to feeling, but I am not okay right now. I'm going through a really hard time, going through a really tough transition. And I saw like everything shifted on social media for me. I started getting so much more engagement than I had ever gotten. People were crawling out of the woodwork, sharing their story with me, just thanking me for being vulnerable, telling me that by my sharing, it inspired them to be vulnerable and share something with someone else or it inspired them to make a hard decision that they really felt like they needed to make like i started creating so many connections with people because of my decision to just be honest and real and so that's really what got me started on what i like to call is like the anti-highlight reel approach that is the approach that i like to take on social media so i do have really big bright energy i'm known for having a dance party on my insta stories but if i'm not doing well I let my audience know, like I am equally as known for crying on an Insta story or putting out a reel that shows that I was crying or talking about the fact that I'm not doing well for one reason or another. And I've seen that that is really how we create connection online. And um, that has been a huge part of what, what I do now. I think that's huge too, because we're so used to on social seeing the perfect ends of life. You know what I mean? Like the, the relationship parts and every relationship has like their moments where you, you, you kind of, you know, nitpick or annoy each other, but you know, photos always show a different story or, you know, showing whatever's going on, what are you, whatever you're doing, it's always seems to be the perfect moments. And I can, I, I know, um, you know, our listeners, you know, aren't going to, didn't hear us check in before, before we started, but I know too, from my perspective, when I got really sick, um, after the birth of my daughter and I shared with you, you're also a fellow celiac. So when I was diagnosed and shared that on social, I had so many people reach out to me too. So it's that 
that connection, you know, that human connection is so, so important to, you know, show the good and the bad that comes with it. So I think that's utterly huge. And I think it's so relatable. And there's people out there that just want to know that someone, not that you want anybody going through anything horrible in their life, but to know that somebody can relate somebody out there has what I have has celiac and you know they've they've got to you know do the things that I have to do with eating out with restaurants asking a million questions with how food's prepared you know the 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 challenge as a fellow celiac with like why is bread so tiny yes (laughs) for for gluten-free bread but it's you know it's the size of my five-year-old's hand Uh, yes (laughs) uh, I think that having somebody in the trenches with you or, you know, is, is utterly huge. It really is. I, and I love that you said, like, it's not like we want other people to be going through something bad, but there is something about just knowing that someone's going through it that just helps lighten the mental load. And not because we're like, oh, someone, it's because we're like, oh, okay. It's <laughs> not just me. It's not just you. And then it's, you just, you don't feel alone. And the validation, right? It's like, it kind of like knowing that someone else is going through that almost ends up validating our experience in a way. And I think that just helps to lighten that mental load around whatever it is. And like the, the celiac thing is I've had so many people come to me when they've told me like I had celiac and it's the, the process to get diagnosed is obviously different and long for some people. And the many people that told me, doctors told me I had anxiety this whole time. That was in my head. So, you know, just to know like the process of not being alone, I think yes. is cool. Yep. So can you explain to explain to us a little bit about that anti-highlight reel approach? Yes, definitely. So um, like I was saying before, the anti-highlight reel approach is what I like to think of. It's the act of pulling the curtain back and being real. So not sharing just those pretty sparkly perfect moments or perfect photos, right? But it's sharing like the full gamut of what you're going through because that is real and relatable. And I always like to caveat, that doesn't mean sharing every little nitty gritty detail of what you're going through, but it means being willing to be open and honest. And if you think that there's some lesson or value point or takeaway that you're crappy story has like because it's not it's not fun to go through those hard times right but if there's usually some lesson some takeaway something you learn or leave that thing with right I'm like a queen of silver linings like I am constantly searching for the good thing that came out of something bad and I think that that in and of itself like the act of looking for those things and then finding them that is valuable in sharing. And so that was really what I wanted to do with the anti-highlight reel. Like, and I started it in 2017 and I have since carried that through. I mean, one of, I have videos on my, and honestly, one of my recent videos, I was sitting in my car. I'd recently cried in my therapist's office, was talking with her, posted a reel about it. I have a number of comments on it. And I had a number of people reach out to me privately and start talking. We started this whole like various different discussions, someone talking about something they're working on in therapy, someone else venting to me about the healthcare system, because I was explaining how my therapist doesn't take my new insurance and how the things that I have to do to work through that. And we were talking about health insurance issues and all that. And just having someone to talk to and connect to about those things makes us feel connected. It reminds us we're not alone. It helps us out mentally. And I think that the biggest downside of social media is that when people are seeing that highlight real content, just that pretty perfect content, they're feeling like they're not enough. They're feeling a lot of comparison. And that is why it's known that a lot of these social media platforms have a negative impact on our mental health. And that makes me so sad. So I'm like, you know what, if I start showing up in a way that I want to see, right? I want to see the real people out there. Those are the people that I like following. Those are the people that I connect with online. And so I was like, I'm going to start practicing what I want to see. And by doing that, I've been able to create so many friendships just through these apps and just opened up my world to 
a lot of different opportunities to get to share my story on stages because people realize like this is what matters is people being willing to talk about the hard things because it makes everyone feel better and it makes everyone feel like they have permission to talk about these things that once were taboo but as we're seeing especially the pandemic created this major shift in just like I think pulling the curtain back in every sense of the word oh I mean because it absolutely I think that brought mental health front and forward in so many ways because I, I mean, the, the amount of isolation from needing to quarantine for safe, re safety reasons or what have you to, I, I don't know if like being at home too during co like COVID is the, like you, you were kind of forced to do a lot of self-reflection in so many ways yep. too on, on top of that. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's utterly huge. Yes. Really huge. What do you think is at the core of authenticity? So is it the vulnerability aspect, do you think, of being willing to be open? Or, you know, wh what are your thoughts on that? I think, um, I definitely think vulnerability is a part of it. And I would say self-awareness um, is really the key. Because I think that you, you have to truly know and understand yourself in order to be your authentic self. You have to know how you're feeling. You have to know what your triggers are. You have to feel comfortable in your own skin and you have to fully like own who you are in every sense of the word that I think is how you actually end up truly being authentic online and offline because the goal for sure should be like whoever you are online if people meet you in person they should be meeting the same version of you <laughs> unless your whole thing is like you have a specific online persona but that's a totally different thing like that's not authentic right we know then that that's like some version of acting if you're trying to be authentic it comes down to truly understanding who you are so that you can let that out absolutely so what, what would you recommend for ways for for people to like look inward when it comes to trying to find find who they are so the first thing I would say is taking time just like in silence in quiet journaling is a huge practice of mine so I would say starting some kind of a journaling habit and I think that a lot of times people are like but what do I journal about what do I write like people really struggle with getting started with journaling um, which always tickles my brain because that's never something that I've struggled with but solely because in my mind I just see it as so simple like what do you start writing whatever's in your mind right like the first thing that's in your mind or the first thing that you can notice in your body whether that is my back feels tense or my stomach hurts or I feel sad because I mean in the instance of me I found out recently that my stepmother um, who has cancer it has spread to her brain and so I journaled the other day in just writing, this feels so unfair. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I started. You know, the thought in my brain was this doesn't feel fair. It doesn't feel right. They've been doing everything and going to all the doctors and doing all the things. And I think just the act of spilling onto a page, whatever it is that's in your head, in your heart, in your body helps you to connect and you can then start working through that. I also think a really, really great exercise, and this is something that I had a friend share with me years ago. So if you are looking to kind of figure out like what makes you, you, because sometimes it's hard for us to self-identify in that way. So an exercise that you can do is you're going to write down the names of like five to seven people in your life. I recommend having a diverse group. So maybe you have like a romantic partner on there. Maybe you have a parent or a family member. Maybe you have a friend, a colleague, a mentor or a mentee. You could have a few friends in there, a few family members, but ideally you're not calling only friends, right? Or only family. You're, you're getting a good diverse group, five to seven people. And I want you to call them and, you know, or text them and ask them, do you have a few minutes for a call? I know that like calling people nowadays out of the blue is like taboo. People don't do that anymore. <laughs> but um, you make sure that you get on the phone because you don't want to text. This is not meant to be like a text or email interaction. This is like meant to be an in-person or phone interaction. So get the space and ask this person this question. What shows up when I do? 
that that person is probably going to like tilt their head a little bit. Maybe they're going to be like, ooh, maybe they're going to be like, what? And you're just going to say, again, what shows up when I do? If you need to take a few minutes to think about that, feel free. But you're not going to prompt them. You're not going to like explain that question. You're going to tell them if they need some time to think about it, they can get it. But then you're going to just listen and see what they say. That's really interesting. Jot down notes of specific words. I just jot, jot it down if you can record it and compare those answers from those five to seven people. I promise you're going to find similarities. And those are the things that people notice about you. Those are the things that are remarkable about you. But when I did this exercise, energy and like brightness was the one thing that every single person mentioned first. Wow. It was the first thing that every single person mentioned when I did this exercise. And I was like, okay. So that's what I'm leading with. That's what people are remembering about me the most. And that's huge in helping to shape like how you speak about yourself, how you present yourself. Like a big thing for me recently in when I'm on, when I'm a guest on a podcast or when I'm speaking at an event, like a part of my bio now is like Julia Jornsey Silverberg is a social media enthusiast with self-described border collie energy. Right off the bat, I set the stage. I put that out there because it's true. It's a good way for me to describe myself. And it also sets the tone for what people know they can expect from me. Like you're not going to get some like boring, dull voice. Like I, I'm not the person who's going to be like putting you to sleep because of my calm. Like that, that's not going to happen here. So figuring out what are the things that you bring with you into interactions, that's so huge because that really helps you step into your power and you can lead with that. So I highly recommend doing that exercise. That's really powerful. Um, I know another thing that worked for me when I was really ill and before I was diagnosed, I was sick for like eight months um, with the celiac. So number one, that journaling, just putting down what you're feeling, like you're, you're nail on the head with that too. Um, but the other thing for those that might just like be dying for like a silver lining in life, um, I found purchasing like a gratitude journal I got off of Amazon and you literally don't have to think if you're somebody that's like, I can't, like, I just don't want to think. I just want to do, um, it gives you prompts for like, what happened today that you were grateful for? What was a good thing? So that way you can pick those, those, um, positive moments to try to change your, or, or change your mindset. If you, if you're trying to look for more positivity or, you know, I think gratitude is so, so important too for finding yourself. Yes. Oh my gosh. I completely agree with that. So how would you recommend kind of like taking those skills um, and kind of moving that into like the, the job hunt? How do you think folks can try to use those skills um, with, with using it, trying to use their authenticity for the job hunt? Because you, just like when you're making a friend, right, you want to show your true self um yeah. you don't want to have you know six months later find out like wow this person's not the person that I thought they were you're gonna you know it goes both ways too with an employer if, with authenticity um you know what are ways that you'd recommend people can do that or show their authentic selves for like the job hunt um I definitely think that the more that you can like infuse creativity into elements of that process the better off you're going to be so Obviously, we know, and, and this is kind of like a do what I say, not what I do, what I'm about to say here. I am admittedly, LinkedIn is a platform that I need to be putting more effort into, and it is something that I have been making an effort at over the last few months, is to be upping my game on LinkedIn. That is like, that's the job hunting platform for social media. So you should be trying to be active there, posting there, putting a good foot, like putting your best foot forward you know, on LinkedIn, that's a really good idea. I also think something that I did, and this was years ago that really helped set me apart in the job search was I actually made a video resume and I spoke to my skills. I had like people in my life professionally 
share little video testimonials about what it was like to work with me that I included for like credibility purposes, because that then kind of cut the need for like, oh, do you have references, right? I like included my references in this little video. I talked about my skills, what I'm passionate about. And that was obviously like a big effort. It took time. I invested money into making this video resume. And again, I made this years ago, but it like got me the job like straight up. I interviewed for a position and I was told that there would be at least one more interview and then possibly another one to get the role. And in my follow-up email for the position, I sent a follow-up email, thanked them so much for taking the time to interview me. And I put a link to that video in the email and they, a few hours afterwards, called me and offered me the position. And so I think that if you can, and again, that's not to be like, this is going to get you, but it definitely could. Like finding ways to just set yourself apart a little bit and or put a little extra effort, thought, care into the interactions that you're having with people in your job searching efforts, that's going to be hugely impactful for you. That is pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> social platforms offer their own way, as you know, as we've been talking to show the authenticity, you know, definitely could probably switch up between platforms with um, probably like how you'd be branding yourself. But and I know you mentioned LinkedIn. So that obviously has um, usually that professional type approach with content you're putting on there. So is there, how would you um, recommend maybe users use that platform um, with trying to show authenticity? So I would say on LinkedIn, start posting about the things that you know, things that you are an expert in. And don't be afraid to include some of your own like personal spin. Don't be afraid to include your personality and let that come through. Um, so if you are an expert in social media, right, like share about the things that you know, write LinkedIn articles. There are so many different things you can be doing on LinkedIn. Like you can be a part of groups and be contributing to conversation. And the most important thing is to really be making sure that you are providing value because now more than ever, companies are looking for people that are like actually not only just knowledgeable, but like actually caring about the communities that they are a part of, right? Like people want a company that has values and companies want people that have values. So don't be afraid to showcase that on LinkedIn because that's going to help you find a company that's a good fit for you because companies want people that they can grow, like that they know will grow with them. So you want to make sure that you are leading with the things that you're passionate about, the things that you know, and the things that are important to you, because that's going to really help you find the best fit for a company to work for. Because if the values aren't aligned, it's only going to be like a short term fit, right? And companies want people that can do more than just check a box for being able to do something, but they want to make sure that that person can grow with them, that that person can really thrive in that working environment. So don't be afraid to really put yourself out there because I think that's going to be what really maximizes the chance of finding the right role for you. Absolutely. Is there a social platform that you feel gives someone the greatest freedom to show that their authentic selves, I guess? Definitely TikTok. Um, I would say TikTok for sure. I, I also though love YouTube. I think that there are a lot of really fun, authentic YouTube content creators out there, but I think the... Um, the expectation for quality of production is much higher on YouTube. So it kind of increases the, there's a higher bar there. And so I think that that prevents some people from even wanting to dip their toes into YouTube. Whereas TikTok, it's like, there, there's just no expectation that the content is going to be pretty, let alone perfect. And so I just think that that is so fun. Like, I think that you can find the most authentic human content out there on TikTok and there's just such a low barrier to entry like your content doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't you don't have to have the perfect aesthetic you can just show up as you are there are so many pe people that are creating like super loyal audiences this way just by being themselves showing up consistently and posting what 
they think is funny or posting things that they know about. Um, and I personally am just having so much fun on TikTok. So I think it's a really great platform to be on because I just think that you can really do anything. And it's, it's just a lot of fun over there. I have a lot of laughs and I learn a lot too. I feel like TikTok, it seems as well, has this insane organic reach to it. I mean, it's not like other platforms where you've got to like hit the algorithm just right. And, you know, it just seems to have the ability to have way more views um, than any other platform as well. Definitely. I mean, for me, I have a TikTok right now. I'll tell you the the stat on it. I have a TikTok that has 916,000 views. Wow. Like my, my viral TikTok that has... Oh, that's almost a million. That's wild. So yeah, there, there's a lot of views to be had on TikTok. There's a lot of fun to be had. And there's just so much you can learn too. So I, I love it over there. What was the context of that video? So it's actually here and I can, I can show you guys. It is me in the car and I'm crying. And it is me saying like, fun fact about me, I've always been the crier. And I wrote about like how I'm the crier in my friend group, the crier in my family, um, and how I used to be so ashamed of being a crier. And now I've really come to learn that um, through therapy, that my hypersensitivity is a superpower and I don't feel guilty anymore for crying. It has 180,000 likes. It has 14.7 thousand saves. And the wow. comments section is the most wholesome thing in the world. The comments is just filled with other people being like, me too. I'm also a crier. Me too. I felt so ashamed throughout my whole childhood. And I, it, it's like, I, I am so proud of that video just for the fact that there's this comment section of over a thousand people being like, I feel seen here. Yes. Yes. Like, and that's just proof too, that like, Sometimes we overthink what we need to post on social media. That was literally a video. I put my camera on my little tripod thing in my car. I was driving home. It was a sunny day. And I also remember I felt guilty for crying because it was sunny. And I don't know if anyone else who's like hypersensitive or a crier can relate to that, but it's almost like, oh my God, why am I like wasting a, a sunny day with my tears, right? And even that is just such a weird mental thing to do to ourselves, but I know I'm not alone in doing that. And so I was like, I'm, I feel like so many people could relate to being a crier. And I'm now that I'm thinking of it, I'm like, I need to do another version of this TikTok where I'm like feeling guilt, like something about feeling guilty for crying when it's sunny, because I'm sure that is super relatable to people too. It just goes back to, you know, what we've been saying in this discussion about you, th that, that human connection, that relatability and knowing that you're not alone. Yep. You, know, you validated that validation so that exactly totally speaks to that unbelievable <laughs> well julia i really appreciate you being on the show and i think we've given you know listeners and viewers a lot of food for thought i think and and i hope it inspires them to you know want to bust out and you know that anti highlight reel and and, um, you know, really put themselves out there. If people want to connect with you, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, I really hope it does too, Sarah. Thank you so much. I so yeah. loved being here and I would love to connect with anyone. Um, I, you can find me on any social media platform at jbethjs. So J-B-E-T-H-J-S. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I also have a website, juliajorensaysilverberg.com. So you can find me there as well. But I will be super responsive if you want to send me over an Instagram DM or find me on TikTok. Um, I'm there every day, posting a few times a day over on TikTok too, and just having a lot of fun over there. So I would love to connect with you guys and help you figure out how you can really show up on social media in a way that's unapologetic so that you can be building relationships and ideally growing your business at the same time. Thank you. Thank you.